It's a perfectionist. <laughs> Good. Well, Margot, I was looking forward to seeing you again, and uh, I will be looking forward also to seeing Superman 4, because I really get such a, a kick out of these films. Um, in this one now, is there anything different about the relationship between Lois and Clark Kent, mm -hmm. or Lois and Superman? Yeah, Christopher and I had long discussions about it, because um, it, it's rather hard to hide the fact that one's nine years older on film when they come in on those close-ups, you know. Um, so we talked about it, and I said, well, now, look, we, the audience knows we made the first one a long time ago, and because it's not a comic strip where you can draw the same person looking the same forever, and we've aged, we have to acknowledge that, therefore, the relationship has changed. And so our decision was to make it more one of a deepening of the friendship and love, more like an old married couple who've been together for a while, and they really know each other, and they love each other, and they trust each other, and they're not afraid of each other. And we sort of tried to make the idealized relationship of, of, of um, a very supportive, loving woman and a, and a guy who trusted her and was able to cry on her shoulder. Was it an advantage, the fact that Chris is co-writer? I don't know. Um, okay, Chris is, I mean, knows more about doing Superman than most people, so I don't know. But I mean, when you heard that Chris was was going was going to have that kind of input, were you real glad about that, or didn't well, I thought good for him? I thought he deserved it. You know, yeah. I mean, um, to carry the weight of a movie on your shoulders, which he's done for all of them. I don't have the weight of the movie on my shoulders. Uh, I thought, great, go ahead, good for you, give it a try. What about having the another woman? This time it's Marielle Hemingway. Mm -hmm. uh, what does that do to you, and what does that do to the, the Lois Lane relationship? Well, she falls in love, you see, it's kind of fun. She falls in love with Clark Kent, and she hates Superman. She thinks he's boring and a goody-goody and can't stand him. Because I'm so dumb through all these movies I haven't figured out yet, and it's the glasses, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm in love with Superman, so there's no real rivalry there. I mean, there was, um, the writers initially had written some of that really degrading bitchiness between women that I don't like. Marielle and I just took it out. We decided we, we, would be, we would become friends. I didn't, we weren't in love with the same man. She was in love with Clark and I was in love with Superman. And there's a great scene where there's a double date and Chris has to, we're both there waiting and I'm waiting for Superman and she's waiting for Clark and we've set the table in this grand apartment she's got. And and Superman has to rush in and say something to me and then go, excuse me for a second, psh, out the door, and suddenly he has to come in as Clark, take care of Mario for a minute, psh, and he's back and he goes, it's hysterical, just hysterical <laughs> and really a wonderful scene. What about the scene where Superman is, is uh, explaining or, or showing that he has self-doubts? What about that scene? What about it? Well, about well it? in that um, the... That, that might be kind of surprising to some well, people. Well, it humanizes him. I mean, I, Christopher, you know, when you play a comic strip character, um, your job as an actor in a film is to bring to life, in the truest sense of the word life, the characters off the printed page. Now, it's, you have an extra, you have a double load if you have a comic strip character whose traits are known to all of America. Um, you, the audience doesn't buy it if there's not some truth to the, if it's pure comic strip. It works in a comic. It doesn't work on film. So Christopher or Superman having self doubts he, makes him someone that the audience can therefore relate to more, and therefore be, he's more human. His pain is real. His his feelings are real, but he still stands for truth, justice in the American way, and goodness, and still can do all those wonderful things. I think it was great. I think it was a great choice. When you auditioned originally for Lois Lane, and there must have been hundreds of people dying for that job, what did you do so that they would remember you and said that you would make a big impression? You really want to know? I do, uh, I do. Well, I didn't know they auditioned hundreds of people, but I did know that I wanted the part. And, I, and Chris was real skinny then. I mean, he was really skinny. And I remember walking in and I got right off the plane. I had my cowboy hat on, my boots. I came right from the ranch in Montana. I thought, this guy's playing Superman, he's so skinny, I couldn't believe it, and there he was. 
And I went, well, okay, the way you're going to make this one work is you just look like you love him to bits. <laughs> so that's what I did. And then I came to, over the years, love him to bits as a brother. I mean, he's one of my best friends, so that's been great. But that one moment when I'd never met him before and suddenly was thrown in this scene, I just went, to look like you love him. <laughs> of course, any woman, I think, looking at Chris Reeve, it, it's not hard to look adoringly at him, is it? I mean, yeah, he's, yeah. he's a work of art, let's face it. Yeah, he looks exactly like my brother, so to me, he's just, he's Christopher, you know. Oh, he's my, well, he he's doesn't look like my brother. <laughs> he's just my buddy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Oh. He always seems, even in person as Chris, he always seems pretty mild-mannered. Is he, really? Or do, can well, he? I'm not. I mean, I know Chris inside out and backwards. I'm not going to tell the press who he really is, and I hope he's not going to tell them who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's what friendship's all about. Um, okay, I'll, I'll let you tell what you are. You no, are. no, I won't let, no, that's for me. <laughs> mm -mm. No, well, we all have many facets to our personalities. Yeah. I hope we're not exactly. all one level. Exactly. I mean, and, and as Christopher is as human as anyone else, as am I, as are you, as is anybody else walking down the street, you know. Um, has being associated with Superman and being Lois Lane, has that cost you other acting jobs? No, it's made me quite rich. Uh, it, possibly it has, um, but there's a lot more to my life than acting. I mean, there's life first, and then there's acting. In fact, I was once making a movie in Vancouver and getting far too wrapped up in it and far too temperamental about it not being as perfect as I wanted, and I stopped for a moment. I went, Kidder, life is more important than movies. Now, calm down. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll send myself some flowers. So I called the florist and I said, I'd like flowers sent to Margot Kidder's room at the hotel, a dozen pink roses. The note says, remember, life is more important than movies. And so I wait and the flowers arrive and the guy got it wrong. He said, remember, life is more important than moves. <laughs> but there, <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I, I can't pr predict. There's somebody else who's in charge of my life, you know, you don't get to control it all. <laughs> And so whether Lois Lane has cost me some other job that maybe Jessica Lange got and I wanted um, is, A, I don't know, and, and B, I've, I've been given so many pluses that I feel pretty grateful. Good. Margot, it's fun talking with you. Thanks. If you. If you just get over your initial shyness and say what you really think. <laughs> Thanks, Margot. Okay. <laughs>